Hey everyone, I'm Sam Clark with Crimson Education and today we are going to be talking about how the US News and World Report calculates their best college rankings every year. Now, the US News and World Report has been ranking colleges on a number of metrics for 35 years and they're considered to be the best in the industry at this. So today we're gonna to talk about how they get those rankings, what their methodology is, and some disclaimers along with it. First disclaimer to go with this overall is that while these college rankings are of course very, very useful, um, they're certainly not the end all be all of college rankings or of how you should decide which college or university is the best fit for you based on what you wanna study and what your dreams are. So if you want a bit more of a personalized look um, and evaluation about what schools might be best for you to apply to, I encourage you to click the link below in the description where you can connect up with an academic expert at Crimson Education who will do a free, that's right, free consultation with you um, to get that conversation going and to figure out what schools are the best for you and how to start your process towards getting into the school or schools of your dreams. Now, with that out of the way, let's do this. The first thing that US News and World Report does when determining its college rankings is that they divide colleges into different categories. That way they're not comparing colleges that might have very, very different academic missions. So the way they do that, they break it down into 10 categories. The first is national universities. So these are your Harvard's, your Stanford's, your UC Berkeley's, your UCLA's. These are universities that have undergrad majors, um, but they also have master's programs, they have doctoral programs, and they place a large emphasis on um, the research that their faculty does. That's category number one. Category number two is national liberal arts colleges in the United States. So these are your Middlebury's, your Swarthmore's, your Pomona's, that focused most exclusively on undergrad education rather than graduate education and faculty research. The next four categories after that that US News and World Report uses are regional universities. So those are universities clumped by either North, South, Midwest, or West in the United States. And they these are schools that offer undergrad degrees and graduate degrees, but typically not uh, doctoral programs. And the final four categories that they use are regional colleges. So similar geographical groupings in the United States using North, South, Midwest, and West, but these are colleges um, that focus on an undergrad education, but less than 50% uh, of their degrees are in liberal arts disciplines. So, with that in mind, US News and World Report doesn't compare apples to oranges, they compare apples to apples, if you will. Um, and so within those categories, there's a very specific methodology that US News and World Report uses um, every year, but it also changes slightly from year to year. So let's talk about it. The first factor is outcomes. So we're talking about graduation rates, um, retention rates, graduation rate uh, performance. So what it looks like um, when, a, when a student graduates, what type of careers do they go off to. It also includes social mobility. So the percentage of students who are enrolled in a college as a result of Pell Grants um, and the graduation rates and graduation rate performance for those Pell Grant recipients. The second factor is faculty resources, which means a couple of different things. The first of which is class size, also faculty salary, um, the proportion of full-time faculty with the highest degree in their fields, student to faculty ratio, and the proportion of faculty who are full-time. This is 20% of their ranking. Um, US News considers it to be pretty important um, in terms of what type of faculty resources are at the disposal of faculty and um, what does the composition of that faculty at the school look like. The next factor the US News uses is what they call just expert opinion. So essentially they're staking a lot on the academic reputation uh, of these schools as determined by um, provosts, by uh, deans of admission, by presidents of different universities, whose opinions go into a two-year weighted average of ratings. So US News is constantly gathering this data and in those two-year weighted averages, they determine from all these academic experts, uh, what do they think are the top universities in their field and within those 10 categories that we talked about earlier. 
Another category that U.S. News considers for about 10% of the consideration of their rankings is financial resources. Uh, they look at it through the lens of considering that um, per student spending is potentially a pretty good indication um, of what a college is able to offer uh, in terms of services, in terms of quality of education um, for a student stay at that university. The next piece of the puzzle for U.S. News is a category that they call student excellence. Now, student excellence, they measure over a variety of indicators, some of which are actually the indicators that these universities use to determine um, which students they are going to allow into their classes. So those factors include um, standardized test scores, as well as class standing within a student's high school before they matriculate to that university. The final US News ranking category, which is a smaller one, it's only 5% of their ranking, is um, alumni giving. So that's the percentage of living alumni um, with bachelor's degrees from that university who decide to give back to their school uh, through donations. So in conclusion, there's obviously a lot that goes into this annual US News report of college rankings. Um, this was hopefully just a little bit of glimpse into what that methodology looks like within those 10 categories. Um, and remember that a lot more should go into your college decision than just these rankings. But of course, these rankings can be very useful. And with that in mind, over the next few months, we are going to be releasing a whole series of videos going through these US News and World Report rankings, um, talking to you about uh, a wide range of categories, um, from those geographic categories to university and college categories to specific academic disciplines, departments, and more. Um, if there's a specific ranking, a US News ranking that you would like us to unpack in a video, please, please comment below about that, um, or if there's any other type of video that you'd like us to see. I've been Sam Clark with Crimson Education. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to Crimson Education, click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get a notification every time we post a no new video. And again, if you want to have a more personalized look and a more um, sort of expansive unpacking of what schools might actually be best for you beyond the rankings and taking into consideration your passions and your dreams, please click the link below in the description to connect you with an academic expert for a free consultation, Crimson Education. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.